What's going on YouTube Garden? It's your boy Sydney from the Naked Gardener channel. In this video, we're gonna be showing you a full garden. If something that you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon. All right, so we're gonna start over here with our container garden. Now with our container garden, we had added the drip system here to so allows Mrs. Naked Gardener and our daughter to water without having to drag the holes out and water during this uh, hot temperatures that we're starting to get into in Texas right now. I believe the high is at 92 and just being out here all day and trying to water this is just going to be just time consuming and just too much on it. Uh, so we added the drip system. Uh, we had a lot of spider mite issues and we're just basically uh, sucking the life out of some of our plants. And I see I missed a, a few here right now so we'll, we'll clip some of those off. If you want to like right there on this branch right here you can see the spider mites just all right there they're just sucking the life out of that plant right there and we just came back from georgia to find this damage yeah. and so when you see plants like that and you see all those webs you have uh, issue with spider mites so this plant might be a garner, garner but luckily these are the blue cream and so luckily we have some on here right now so we're going to allow them to get right with the sun and whatnot and then uh, so those were the good goods and bads that we had issues with on on this side it's just a lot of spider mite damages and whatnot and then over here we have mrs naked gardener herb uh ladder tre trellis here and um she had, you had some stevia and some anise in here before you came to visit me, but I think some army worms or something got no, into it. No, the, the failure that I had over here is being gone. Yeah. Um, there was new growth. It's a smaller area. It needs to be watered more frequently. Not the same type of watering that the rest of our garden needs, and so it just couldn't sustain itself in that new growth. And it just died, and that was just from me abandoning the garden. Yeah, so uh, we're, this is something that we just have to, one of these live and uh, learn situations. Uh, one reason why I like to start the uh, seeds and the, uh, and the starts first before transplanting them out into the, wherever they need to be at, but you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, if you're interested in learning about how to build one of these, I'll put the description down below. We did a video on how we basically built one of these very easy. Um, so next we'll go over to the flower bed over here. All right, over here we have Mrs. Naked Gardener flower bed. This is what used to be our test bed, but now uh, we just uh, just gave it to her and allow, allow her to do whatever she wants in this bed. She got some lavender in here, and then we got our color theme of some uh, yellow and purple uh, flowers here. And I think these are African daisies, and I'm not sure what these they are. Had, yeah, they, uh, there were blossoms when I left but um, I think that they've been getting shaded out, the African daisies. They're a beautiful yellow purple color, and I think they got shaded out. Yeah, but they've been, they started off real small, and then they just basically took over, especially with this drip irrigation system in here. And then we got our moringa down there. Uh, we think we have some butterfly weed here. Mm -hmm. And then we have, uh, these are the key lime marigolds, yeah. right? Yeah. It looks like we got some spider mite, spider mite issues mm -hmm. here. I was looking at that earlier when I was watering them. So, if any of y'all know how to get rid of spider mites, we think we might have a solution for that. And we're, we did a video on it, so stay tuned to that. But if you have a way to get rid of spider mites, let us know. Comment down below, especially if the, we have some first time uh, viewers uh, watching and stuff. Uh, like I said, we got some butterfly weed here, and that one was your... That's a Dahlia dinner plate. Um, I just trimmed it down a little bit because while I was gone, it got really leggy. Um, and there hasn't been any blooms, and I don't want it to be so leggy and then bloom. Yeah, so, uh, these are annuals, but they will come back. I guess they're, they're almost like biannuals because you could cut, cut it down and bring it inside and mm -hmm. keep the root as long as you keep it uh, fresh. We normally do it in uh, cocoa core or peat moss, 
and then when it's time to do it again in the spring we we'll just add it out so you can see some bees flying around because of the bees which is the reason why yeah. we wanted to add some flowers in here to help bring pollinate we have a lot more pollinators this year with all the flowers mm -hmm. especially from from that bed right there uh, next, we got Mrs. Naked Gardener's uh, lemon tree, my, uh, improved uh, Meyer lemon tree. We decided to put it out here just for a experiment, see if it does a lot better in the sunlight compared to the other one we have. It's uh, in the shade, it has a filter uh, sunlight, so it doesn't get uh, direct sunlight, it is basically indirect sunlight. And it looks like it's doing a lot better than it is in with direct sunlight, which you would think being the citrus that it thrives better but wait till you see the the other one yeah. uh, the different uh we did this is our compost tea it's normally our fertilizing uh, day we just got done watering so after this video we'll be doing a fertilizer on that so if you're interested in what's inside of here make sure you stay tuned and we'll be posting that video up here shortly uh, these are just some leftover tomato plants that we had. Those are the Blue Wagner. Yeah, these are the Blue Wagner. And this is Nicky Gardner. Just bought this interesting thing uh, to kind of help with her watering while I'm away. And it's, uh, it's this simple. Oh, you did poke a hole in here. Yeah, huh? I did. Mm -hmm. uh, so you just add this onto a water bottle and you basically. Do it so I can see. So can you could just here and it lets you do your drip from there. So it kind of helps cut down on the watering from from that. We're about to head into 100 degree temps. So yeah. I'm just really looking to help offset some some additional watering. Yeah, and these grow bags that she has, they retain a lot of uh, moisture compared to Those the, have turned out to be good grow bags. Yeah. Compared to these, these will allow your plants to dry out a lot uh, faster, uh, but they allow your plant to air prune themselves. So where the once the root hits the side of the container, it will basically prune itself and then force the plant to send more roots, which means it's be able to take up more nutrients. So uh, here we have some okra, and I think a mouse or something been in here playing. I think maybe when Kendall was watering while I was away that she had it on a high uh, um, a high uh, volume mm -hmm. and it was like pitting a hole. Well, we'll, put, we'll add some see. mulch right here to kind of alleviate that issue so that way if either one of y'all uh, have that issue, it won't happen again. Yeah. Uh, let's go over to these containers. We got a lot of squash growing. Mm, gorgeous yeah. squash. And, and when we came back uh, Friday, we noticed this big bad boy. That right was here. not there when I left. Yeah, it, it was probably about that size, probably even smaller than that. It was. It was like that one in the back. Yeah, and so these are... Those are white scallop squash. The white scallop squash. Mm -hmm. And we decided just to put it up this on a trellis. And uh, hopefully we'll get a lot more of these bad boys here soon. These are the lemon lemon squash lemon mm -hmm. squash i'm not sure if what size these are supposed to get so if anybody ever grown any of these lemon squashes it's our first year just let us know this is our first time ever growing squashes at all and these are the pattinson pattinson something yeah Jan yeah <laughs> we'll put a description on the screen it's here it's a baker creek seed yeah but uh See right here, once it starts gets it'll get more green in between these crevices right here. And I guess that's when you will be able to uh, harvest this. Uh, Put your hand on that. It's it's huge. Yeah. Like, and that's he what has she big said. hands. <laughs> he has really big hands. Uh -oh. So. oh. Did you just I'm gonna die? And here is some more lemon uh, squash that we have here. Yeah. Been thriving very well. Good. And once again, we don't know if these, if that's the size, if they're supposed to get a little bit bigger. So we're still learning on that one. Yeah. Uh, back here, we got, oh, wow. We oh, to, yeah, we have a huge oh. one. Um, this leaf is in the way. But yeah, I got to cut back some of that's these. That's another. Um, yeah. White so I need to get some more airflow through here. So I'll, matter of fact, I get my. 
instruments right now. Get some more airflow. And then that way we can, whenever there's a... We've like, decided that I can't be away from the garden uh, for more than three days for the rest of the season. So I'm not going to be able to stay a whole week with him in Georgia anymore. So no more three-course meals? Mm-hmm. So we'll get some air flow. Oh, there's a, a, a boar. Where? You see that bird? Oh. Get it. Mm. Squish that bad boy. Oh. It, Did you see it? Let there me, go, right there. Let me there. see it. Let me see it. I can't see your hand. Oh. Ah, I saw that. It's trying to kill our squash. This. Mm. We captured that puppy. So we got to spray on here. Keep these again. Keep uh, these boars down because last year there was a bad. We didn't grow squash last year, but we noticed that everybody had bad ish. Even at our community garden, we noticed people were complaining about the boar uh, just and just killing off all the squashes and whatnot. So hey, what is that? It looks like one of those uh, white scallops again. Early scallops. Yeah. Right there. So this one's just starting to pop off. Yeah, so we gotta get get on this proactiveness of these off since we got a lot of squash right here, start spraying heavily. But that's why I can't be gone for more than three yeah. days anymore because I mean we have to be diligent. And this is our turmeric? No, that's ginger. Ginger, yeah, ginger. This is our ginger plant and this is some one of the roots that we've grown. Uh, started from uh, the grocery store. We just picked out a few of it from the grocery store. I think it was um, organic. Yeah, but it was from that one uh, Buford place in Georgia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we just gathered, got a few of those, and we planted inside the east about what February, March time frame. Yeah. And so we did a video on, on it actually. We'll put it. Last year a, we had a really good harvest. Yeah, on this that. we had a better harvest on this out of all the root vegetables that we've done, even though it's not a root, it's a, a Ramazon, but yeah. it is what it is. And then this is our new one this year. Yeah, this is another plant that we started from the grocery store. Uh, this is the Sun Choke. Mrs. Nicky Gardner got me. AKA people like to call it the fartichoke. Yeah. But uh, we haven't had that problem with it. <laughs> yeah. It's really yummy. And seeing some discoloration in some of the leaves. So luckily with that fertilizer uh, that we're or that compost tea that we're doing, uh, we'll be able to uh, do some saturation of some leaves here. Can we peek and look at that tomato um, that we have, that pineapple tomato? Yeah, we got a pineapple tomato. I'm scared to touch it since I mm. might. Like, and see, once again, we're getting some leaf minor damage right there. Yeah, so we're finally starting to get something from those pineapple tomatoes. And look at Mrs. Necker Gardner. She got her curry. This is your curry this plant. This is my baby. Yeah. This is my baby right here, this curry leaf tree. Mm. I repotted it. I'm really into growing stuff that I can make spices and flavors for my cooking, and this one I am psyched about. Yeah, and she we grew she grew this straight from seed, so. Mm -hmm. That's seed. All right. Now that you're out of the way, let me get a better view because I got better light. It is so pretty. Now it gets droopy like this in the afternoon in this heat, but as soon as it's in the shade, like it it just fans open. It's really pretty. Uh, once again, we got some more sun chokes right here, mm -hmm. and then we got some artichokes. I don't know what to deal with artichokes. <laughs> Never had it. Uh, this, this is year two. Yeah, this is year two that we had this artichoke, and it was uh, we had bigger leaves, but we've been trying. Luckily, we've been having this container. That's a good thing about uh, growing in containers, especially if this is your first time uh, growing because now you're able to move it in different locations. We had it in the sun or out in the shade in, in there a little bit where it wasn't getting direct sunlight. Uh, then we had it out here. Then when Mrs. Naked Gardener was gone, it just... It's not liking it out here. Yeah, and so I might just uh, take the leaves out, add some more compost in here and put it back in there and just wait for the fall. Hopefully it will start to bloom from there. 
Uh, we got some squash right here. This squash, we thought it was a, a garner plant and uh, because we had transplanted and you know it's hard. I was supposed to thin it, but I took it and I repotted it. Yeah. And squash doesn't like that usually. Yeah, squash don't don't like their roots to be disturbed and I didn't think it was gonna be, I, don't, I didn't think it was gonna make it, but it wound up making it. So we got a few that just didn't get quite pollinated here but it's starting to send off more male plants we've got a one zucchini flower mm -hmm. right here and so we'll see how that goes and here we have our turmeric and that turmeric. <laughs> and uh, we once again we're growing that straight from the grocery store in the organic aisle uh, picked it up and decided to plant it we did a video on that check it out these stupid darn so our passion flower is beautiful but it's really annoying it's um, very invasive we had extremely we just pulled some uh they were plants standing right out up here. that tall yeah. uh vines trying to grow out and another one of our artichokes this was a raspberry but it sucked so i put in one of those beautiful sunflowers that's on the cover of baker creek whole seed uh, catalog this year that uh, I want to call it the blue hoppy. Yeah. I'll correct myself if I need to, but that's what that is. And so I'm super excited to follow uh, the growth of that one. So yeah, if uh, y'all aren't following us on Instagram, Mrs. Naked Gardener is going to show you the progression of some of these plants on here. All right, here we got some carrots. These are the regular uh, Amarillo carrots. They're yellow. Uh, we had my nephew and my uh, great nephews down here uh, visiting one time and they got to see how to you know how to how carrots are actually grown and the seeing their faces and stuff like we allowed them to taste some of the baby carrots and they they were fascinated by that okay on here what's the tomato we have on this side so we have one on each side right now well, this is the yeah, pork chop, that's the pineapple. Oh, was that pineapple? Yeah. Okay, so that was the pineapple, and then that one is the pork chop. Uh, here we have some nasturtium there due to this heat. They're dying I'm off here. Out. And the spider, but we had some of these uh, tra uh, trailing, trellis uh, pole beans called blue hide from Baker Creek. They were beans. And the spider mites just got a hold to them. So we're going to keep these intact, though, just to see if they continue to thrive up. But We're in a war with yeah. the spider mites. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, all of these tomatoes right here are supposed to be the pork chop tomatoes. We basically almost had to prune them to death because of the spider mites and everything. And this was a failed experiment with me being gone. And by the time I was going to come back to do... Uh, the Florida weave on these uh, that Cova uh, 19 hit where they didn't allow any type of transportation uh, into Texas from Atlanta. And that's why I had to leave yeah. neglect the garden and yeah. go there to be with him. So that's why it's kind of basically grown wild the way it is now. We're getting to a point where we need to top them off. By topping them off, uh, that allows them not to grow any uh, any taller than that and start to get bushier from there. So. Uh, we'll, we did a video on that on how to prune tomatoes. Once again, we'll put the description down below uh, We got some uh, peppers, not a pinot peppers here uh, Last year we grew these and they didn't uh, I guess we that's put really them in our late. first uh, our first uh, successful pepper Yeah, last, last year we grew them and they got tall. They just didn't fruit I think we got them out too late due to me hurting my arm and whatnot. Well, our beds weren't even done. They yeah. Even made, so. And then we have these uh, Swiss chards here. And these Swiss chards, they're basically, they... They've been hanging through since they, I think this uh, is their September. second... No, this is their second year, I think. Are they? Okay. Of doing this. I don't know. I know they've been... They're OGs. Yeah, so they... Look at that, another one. Uh, then we got our... Compost. Our in worm, our in bed uh, worm bin. Mm -hmm. I've been right before I went to come see you. I just dumped some more stuff, stuff in yeah. there, and I've been digging it up. I just was uh, turning it in there, and I noticed we had some black soldier fly larvae in there, which is not bad. They actually are good composting uh, bugs, and so they will basically eat 
meats, dairy, I mean, almost just about anything. I, lo I wish I knew our neighbors over there that has the goats and the chickens. I'm gonna start asking uh, our neighbor behind her because I know they got chickens and stuff. Uh, we're gonna probably do a black soldier fly bin, harvesting bin, and see if we can do some uh, bartering with them with some eggs and we'll feed their chicken sperm with that because chickens love those, those larvae that goes in there. Uh, these were supposed to be the cranberry beans. I thought they were bush beans and they wind up started trellising up and this is naked gardener oh i guess they're still trying to fruit up but as you can see we're in a battle though the spider mites just took over so we're going to pull these up here, here later and i'm going to just try to see if i can't nurse them back a little bit okay that's fine we'll see what we can get out of those um they just basically suck the life out of all of that uh here we got our uh tomato here that it looks Which tomato is that you get something on here but i know it doesn't no look that's like a it. pepper yeah maybe that's what that pepper you, was. yeah you put that tomato plant in i don't know we'll find yeah. out here shortly yeah. and once again some is nutrition deficiency and some are some are neglect mites. and then you know um the spider mites and insects just taking advantage of us not being here and it doesn't help that this passion flower basically it'll grab onto something and start sucking the life out of that particular plant as well yeah it's tried to choke out a few things in here mm -hmm. i'll be gone for just uh 10 days or seven days and come back and that passion uh flower has like uh, he, he pulled them up, but there's like spikes every time I come back and I'm constantly pulling them out of the bed Yeah, all of this is just from one plant from one seed all of it, so. Yeah That's the It's a beautiful flower like I don't regret having it. It's gorgeous So exotic and beautiful uh, next we have some uh, eggplant right here. It had some uh, beetle damage on here. I had to prune off We're gonna have to start spraying more. On it's the... looking a lot better though. Yeah as I mean, We just have to keep on spraying once you see your leaves looking like that on eggplant You know, you got some be uh, beetle issues. So you're gonna have to spray uh, Mrs. Naked Garden put some ground cherries in here. I tasted one of them. She said you gotta wait till they fall off. Yeah, he ate one when it wasn't ready, and so now he has an opinion. But you know, if you don't have it when it's ready, yeah, you don't know. But uh, we probably have to do some hydro hydrogen peroxide sprays on these because of the, the way the leaves are looking like. So we'll yeah. see how that is. Uh, then. We have our catnip. The cats love coming and snacking on that catnip. I've had some stories on Instagram about Sage. He Sage the cat. Yeah, he goes crazy for that catnip. And there's a neighborhood cat that we kept seeing on our uh, video cam while we were in Georgia <laughs> visiting our yard. And I, I know it's because of that catnip. Yeah. And is this what you make sometimes uh, a tea out of it? Yeah, yeah, I've done a, a tea with that. So it is a medicinal type plant, not just for cats, but also for uh, us humans, other mammals and stuff. Uh, it's a good uh, sleepy time tea. Yeah, it has a lot of nutritional and me medicinal benefits. Yeah, and then we got our pepper plants. This is our uh, compost bed. We just basically normally was putting compost in here. But now, since our warm tower bed, where we'll get to here shortly, Mrs. Necker Gardner decided that since that thrived very well, she wants all of our beds to be uh, worm bins type. Or, and these beds are doing better this year. Yeah, now that we have another worm bin, in ground worm bin tower here. So a lot of stuff has been thriving, like our okra here. This is our Jing okra. And these are still babies. Like we were a little late putting those in, and they, they're really thriving. Mm -hmm. And then we got our pickle bush uh, cucumber pickle bush cucumbers they are great if you're in an apartment and don't have enough space to have a trellis to climb up on top of those yeah we just showed yours in the apartment mm -hmm. garden and so those are going to be uh, great to have 
Mrs. Naked Gardener uh, started these this from seed. This is a marshmallow plant. And what what can you do with it's marshmallow a, plant? It's another medicinal plant. It's really the root that's valuable. Uh, I have learned since that it can be maybe invasive, so I'm going to be really watching that. Oh, great. Another yeah, invasive plant. But it's supposed to be a really great medicinal plant. And that's kind of my thing. I'm just learning mm. uh, a lot about medicinal plants. Over here we have some more okra plants. These are the Alabama Reds. And uh, so we're trying uh, several different varieties of okra. We got the Jing Orange, the Clemson Tide, and the Alabama Reds. I thought we also had some Star Dave. I think that's what the ones yeah. over there were, the Star, Star David or David Star plants, whatever. Uh, here is another eggplant. That's, Very healthy eggplant. Yeah. It started off like you wouldn't have guessed it would be so yeah. healthy. Yeah, and it's, well, we got, look like we got some snail damage where it's, mm. oh no, what is that? Little crux. No, that's like some type of fibrous type stuff. But uh, spittle bugs and stuff like that. Uh, but I think I'm ready for to probably top this off and start having more flowers come out of here and getting us more eggplants out of here. Uh, we got uh, Mrs. Nick Gardner got some more echinaceas back here to help bring some more pollinators out here. Uh, so that way the eggplants and these that uh, Robin from Big Bear Homestead kind of told us about. She warned us not to do this. Yeah. This, before Mrs. Nicky Gardner left, it was right here. These are, yeah. are the loofahs. And we came back uh, Friday, and it's basically covered this whole trellis. Let me get a better view of this, because, like, it's the first time we've ever had anything, like, actually make all the way up and we have them growing on both sides yeah i think these were the baker creek yeah. ones and these were the botanical garden yeah, botanical on garden. that side and those are the baker creek and we really just wanted to do a comparison let's see who has the better seed yeah so far they're equally matched so yep so, well, I'm excited. That's just an experiment. I'm excited yeah. about and it. And with loofahs, uh, from what she was saying, is if you eat uh, eat them young or pick them young, you can eat them. Other than that, you can, once they get old, you let them dry out. I think even Mike from uh, Bit Farmer, uh, they was up there talking about uh, how they uh, shred it off and use it as cleaning products and stuff like that. And so, and then Robin and Robin and Jason from Big Bear Homestead, they confirmed it. Uh, so. You know. And we trust what they have to say. Yeah. Yes, we trust what Mike has to say. Big bear home. <laughs> uh, we got some tomatoes here. These are the tiny Tims, which I'm surprised we didn't grow that many like we did last year. I think we're going to start here soon. And then we got these uh, mini bells, which I'm growing in an apartment. Uh, which I probably already seen on that video. We'll put them. They are bigger at your apartment than they are in this bed. Even though this bed has some very productive, yeah. nice. Let's see if we get some spider mites. And you know what? That one in that other bed uh, over there is a mini bell. Now that I'm looking at yeah. this tomato, it's a mini bell. Yeah, but and we got some uh, malnutrition uh, issues with these uh, plants. When you see the veins like that, it could be some iron or uh, magnesium. You probably need to get that chelated iron. Well, with or... that compost tea that I'm doing right there, it has a yeah. mixture of everything. We're going to do some foliage sprays and some soil spray here. Exciting stuff in here. Oh, and this is an eggplant that I truly been waiting for since last year. I was jealous that uh, we saw uh, Broussard's homestead on one of their lives that they had one of these. And it's just gorgeous. I can't wait to try it's it. It's nice to come home and see this after watching their lives of theirs. It's it, a beautiful variegated yeah, eggplant. I just love the color on it. And it goes with our color uh, scheme of being purple and yellow. So that was a good plus. Uh, this is probably your only dahlia that... Uh, the red skin dahlia. That thrived in any one of yeah. these beds. Because I think either the cut worm or army worm or something was basically eating it up so the african daisies they ate yeah mm -hmm. uh then we got some salvias here nope. where where's the salvia the salvia's right there oh okay and then we got our pepper sweet peppers sweet pepper side on here and, and 
Uh, we got this idea from Seas and Dreams uh, when we did a, a garden tour from her. She's on Instagram. She has really great content. Yeah, she ha she's a wonderful Instagram um, gardener. gardener. Mm -hmm. Well, not just an Instagram gardener, but she does wonderful stories and pictures on Instagram and, and kind of give you an insight on it. Hey, and one. she we, she had a lot of these uh, terracotta spikes in there with the wine bottles and uh, we thought it was interesting because terracottas they basically pull the water out from it and then from the roots itself they they will gather towards the uh to the terracotta so it's, it's basically a foolproof method of of not overwatering and underwatering your plants uh, so once the water goes away it bubbles down and just keeps on going towards the uh the in, inside of the terracotta pot but and as we enter this this hotter season here in texas for me it's just more security in an area that we do not have a drip system so that's been my thing about setting that up um i took note from her and she is a fantastic gardener and then we got the we grew a lot of shishito peppers in our uh worm tower bed and we got some in a lot of these uh, container, fabric container thing. And this is the first one I've seen that turned uh, color. Um, I've been seeing a few of our shishitos that have turned a red color and yeah. some jalapenos too. So I really, um, and that's new to me. If you know why they might be turning red, comment down below. Cause Cause, I, yeah, because they normally look like this. Yeah. And we're looking for, I think we could do like a garlic, uh, uh, olive oil, and peppers, little saute. They're, they're not hot. They got a little, like a... The smaller they are, the more kick there is. The yeah. bigger they are, the less kick. But they're good. So, um, and these are our Jimmy Nardello's uh, yep. Season Dream. Season Dream grew these one time. Make sure. Yeah, she actually recommended that one. Yeah. Yeah. And so she had grew these, and we were a fan after we saw how big and juicy they were. So we decided to get some seeds from. I think we got some from MI Gardener or from Baker's Creek. Mm -hmm. But those are just the terracotta. Oh, these are some more okras. These, these are the yeah. are the Clemson ones. I think one of these is the Jing Orange. Mm -hmm. I think both of them are. Yeah, that's Clemson. And that's Clemson. Mm, okay, I don't know. Yeah. And here you got what, catnip? Yeah. Mm, catnip. And over here we got some of our hotter ones. Yeah, we keep our hot peppers separated. And we got some cayenne peppers over there. I really last year liked uh, making a spice, like grinding those, look drying how, them, and look how many peppers we can. Look at that. Yeah, that, one. that one's about ready. That red one. Mm -hmm. And then here, what is this one? Um, not that, a pinot. Why is that over here? It's I. It's I don't. Well, because it still has some spice. It doesn't have the kick that. Uh, and we, you said that one. Uh, this is a Cubanelli. Okay. Yeah. These are good size Cubanelli peppers. I think they could use them as pickling. And then over here. So this is where I'm having some red jalapenos. Yeah. And, um, I'm like, I don't know what the deal is. Let's see. You got your red. Now you got red jalapenos. And then we have our green ones yeah so again I'm not understanding um, why it's red mm -hmm. and this is our improved Meyer lemon with this some good fruit nice so I think we might just have to put it back over here um, there's no sun damage there's no no issues on the we leaf. we have had some spider mites yeah well we, we've been spraying since uh, Friday-ish, mm -hmm. and so hopefully by the end of the week, we're gonna spray every other day just to try to see how that goes. Uh, we're gonna be putting out some um, videos about that if it if it does go well. Uh, ooh, we got some tomatoes. These are just some cherry tomatoes here. Yeah. 
some cherry tomatoes there. I basically had to prune That's these. That's a hybrid 100. Yeah, I had to prune these back way a lot because of the spider mites. Yeah. Got some peppers there. An eggplant in front of you. These are the purple beauties. These were so good in this bed last year. We had to grow them again this year. Uh, these are some bush green beans. As you see, spider mites have been taking over them. They still got some beans on them. We're going to be continuing to spray on this. There's some good sized ones. Um, yeah. Back there. So these are the regular green uh, garden beans, and these are the golden bush. And uh, they're starting to go to the bush and starting to sprout right now. This purple tomatillo is really, it's our first year growing this. And mm -hmm. Um, it looks like it has some blossoms on it. We haven't had it grow anything yet, but I'm excited. It looks healthy. Yeah, we got two of them. Actually, we got three of them. This one, this one, and that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we have some basil right here. We rarely have to weed in our beds because of how, how tall they are and whatnot. But we've been noticing we got some animals here that has been chewing up our tomatoes mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna see what we can do there so not only Those are we orange toms. yeah so not only are we not fighting pests but now we're fighting rodents in our bed yeah there's one back there with a bite out of it mm -hmm. show those tomatoes there yeah there's some good little high these so are the high burden hundreds yeah and then those are my teddy bear um, sunflowers are prettier on the other side yeah, then we got one of our purple beauties that's looking delicious. It's almost ready. Mm -hmm. As soon as it turns like fully purple. I'm surprised they don't get any bigger than that. And then we have our some more squash here. These are the zucchini squash. They're supposed to be like a long uh, squash here. And uh, we got four of them, five of them growing up so hopefully they'll be able to grow up on this uh, trellis here and I was going to have the beans and the squash kind of meet up together but we'll see how that all right so we got the herb garden we got the sage that we've had since the beginning of time back and, and that it just grows right back up we got some mint I think this is a spearmint or peppermint That's spearmint, I thought. it smells it... like lemon mint oh is it lemon mint okay the spearmint's on the end I'm sorry I moved okay. the containers yeah, and then we got some lemon balm here. Uh, what was this one? Um, that's uh, bee balm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it goes with it by another name. I can never say it. Beer lactin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they got some more mint here. We've got a ton of basil. These are the uh, lettuce leaf. No, those are the base. Oh. You're, lettuce, you're correct. Yeah, yeah. the lettuce uh, leaf basil. It's from Baker's Creek. In yeah, Baker's Creek. Uh, Jess, she's actually growing these as well, but hers is a lot larger. Look like we got some. We have large ones in the other bed. Okay, we'll go show that here shortly. But look like we got some more nutrition issue. We got to start fertilizing a little bit of more on these. Yeah, we it's got, just all us neglecting. Yeah. Then we got the rosemary that's been there since the beginning of time. And what was this one? That's the Persian uh, basil that tastes really good in mixed drinks. It has like a, uh, taste it. It has like a licorice-y kind of Ugh, taste. I don't like licorice. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what it was going to taste like. Mm -hmm. And then we got tarragon. tarragon, thyme. We got these, my last visit here. This is Mexican heather. It's supposed to attract a lot of uh, butterflies. And uh, this is our penta. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of penta because they attract uh, butterflies as well. So we just put these in here. They do require a lot of light. And we get a lot of morning light here. I uh, just didn't want to burn them out because last time we had them out in the front, they just died mm -hmm. later on. So we just want to kind of re uh, limit the sunlight that it that you And we got the same thing that's in this bed growing over here in this See, these lettuce leaves are bigger. Yeah. And healthier looking. See how big that is compared to what a normal basil yeah. leaf is. And we gotta trim some of these down. This is a purple basil. That's a red ruby. Red ruby? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then you got your this was like sage, some different type of sage, right? Yeah, that's a different sage. Mm -hmm. 
that you got. Yeah, all of this is say I think oh this is the culinary the, sage. Yeah, the culinary. Okay. And more pterodon mm -hmm. right here. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Oh. So the lemon balm is flowering and then we have the lemon verbena here. It smells so good. Once again, I think this is oregano. No, that's this is the spicy oregano. Yeah. And it yeah. tastes good. Like mm -hmm. I, I've actually and, all right, so now we're going to go take a look at our tomato alley. If you saw one of our videos where we were talking about pruning the, the uh, tomato plants, you can see how much they have grown. All right, we're here in the tomato alley. We got these uh, Jersey Devil tomatoes right here. We pruned these off. See, we missed a few here. We need to keep on pruning. Especially some of these bad damaged leaves. And they've just been, you know, doing well. Can't complain anything bad about these. Uh, we do got to uh, tie them up a little bit better mm -hmm. and put probably put some more cage, get some more cages around them. Once they get above this cage, we'll, we'll top them off and just allow them to get bushy from there. Uh, here, we just did a video on uh, BT spray where we noticed that a lot of these leaves were damaged uh, so what we've done is we sprayed it and uh, uh, allow it to kill off anything or mess up the digestive system of any kind of uh, worms that were uh, attacking these or calico attacking these. And as you can see now, they look so much healthier. Yeah, well, we took the the leaves that were damaged after. This is only ten days after that treatment. Yeah. So I mean, BT definitely works on your brassicas and your leafy products that you have damaged to. Uh, caterpillars have been eating your crop up this is this is a testimony right there and here is now our tomato alley we're basically it's gonna it's be like a finally a, up at the cage they yeah. weren't even at the cage last time yeah so that oh, i've been stepping on some, one of my plants here uh probably i'm just gonna have to mulch all of this whole area because the grass is just taking it all up but I got some ties now that we're gonna tie those off to these uh, plants and then once the bottom roots, so once it gets taller, no leaves is gonna be any higher than this top uh, trellis portion there. Yeah. And they're just been thriving, we've been spraying and uh, making sure that there's no tomato hornworms attacking these. Been checking them at night. And they've been doing very well. We got some flowers on this one. These are the blue cream berry, pineapple mm -hmm. tomatoes, and this is Nikki Gardner snuck some yellow pear tomatoes in here. Mm -hmm. so, They're sweet. I really like them. So that's the only one we're going to have to tie that up to the trellis there. Mm -hmm. And then next, we'll check on, uh, we'll go to the front yard and show you the, uh, the hexagon, octagon planter that we did uh, that was going to be for Mrs. Nekka Gardner Herb Garden. I'm really happy to see this fever few. So I basically, um, we didn't get to do our front tea garden because of the COVID-19. And um, when that happened, I needed to be able to put my medicinal plants somewhere. They're a hot mess right now because we have been gone. Um, but I have this beautiful borage. All of the bees keep finding their way onto it. They're very attracted to it. And I love the taste of these flowers. You can put them inside of a salad. Um, fever few recently my daughter had a really bad headache and I had her eat about two of these leaves and it helped with her headache. So, um, they say it's more for like migraines or vascular issues, but it was really helpful. Um, are you in the middle of pruning that? Yep, I'm just trying to help it stand up. Yeah, I need to get some, some right mistakes. Here. Yeah, you got some. Ooh. They're shading out some stuff. Yeah. And, um, I'm probably going to dry some of these leaves and do some stuff with them. Ooh. So. Uh, the Johnny Jump Ups have died off because it's just too hot for yeah. them. Yeah, and they were shaded They were off. volunteers in here. Yeah, we never even planted anything yeah. out here. Um, and, and, and everything else that is in here was just a desperation to keep 
alive because I didn't have the beds to put them in. And this is your favorite food too? That is the Cerise Queen. And what's that for? Um, I am still learning more about that one. I know a lot more about the fever few and the borage. Um, so, but it was something I wanted to grow. I just want to get familiar with it. And that was a fever few over here. Yeah. And what's um, this when one? When I left, there weren't any flowers. Oh, and that's St. John's wort. Okay. Yeah, which I'm super excited about. That has a lot of healthy benefits. So. All right, so we have some uh, seed starts that were done out here. Mrs. Neckengartner has some um, marigolds, some calendula, uh, some oh, more calendula, milkweed. Oh, milkweeds are starting to uh, come out. Mm -hmm. uh, what we have here. This was a butterfly mix. This one actually looks like it's going to be a sunflower from what it looks like. Yeah, and some cone flowers that didn't get get to fully germinate we got some there there and there and these right here I'm actually happy about these these are some of the cuttings from our passion flower and uh, with some of the spider mites it kind of got to it so but we sprayed that and I got some of the compost tea that's inside here and we look carefully look at some of the roots on here and this is for about what six or six to I ten days seven or eight days yeah and it got some roots on there so if anyone's in the central north texas dallas area interested about getting some of these passion flowers let us know comment down below hit us up on our instagram page and we'll uh see where we can meet you at and get you one of these uh, cuttings here. They got little slits on the side. And all this is is just basically perlite and cocoa core mixed together and uh, heavily saturated. So it will help retain moisture and allow drainage at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do some of these garden tour every now and then. So try to do at least once a month. We'll put a playlist above here of other uh, garden tours that we have done in the past. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, make sure you give us a subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the upload. Until the next video, let's grow together.